Good morning, everybody. Today is uh, October 10th, and I'm doing this video from Van Horn, Texas. Meanwhile, my home state of Florida has <clears throat> been hammered by Hurricane Milton, but I'm getting trickling phone calls in from my friends, and uh, hopefully everybody's safe. <clears throat> the reason why I'm doing this video, there's different groups of people that will see it. Some are subscribers to my channel, and um, uh, they'll get a notification that a video came in, and they'll watch it. That's fine. This is not meant for those folks. There are some folks that watch my driving videos. They're truck drivers. <clears throat> some of them are currently in school, and some of them are considering going to school. This video is not meant for those folks, and you'll see why as I do the video. This video is for people that are probably in school right now. <clears throat> they see my poster up at, on the wall of their classroom, especially Pensacola State, uh, <clears throat> things like that. At any rate, I'm not looking for just any student. I'm not looking for the person that has retired and just kind of wants to casually see the country. We have plenty of room for those type drivers, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm not looking for the driver that wants to be home every weekend. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either. We have drivers that are home literally every Saturday and Sunday. And the driver I'm looking for needs the money. And they're tired of working paycheck to paycheck. They're tired of robbing Peter to pay Paul. And they just want to be able to go to work, one job, make a living, not just barely make a living, but have enough to put away into retirement, <clears throat> have enough if an emergency comes up. And you know what? Maybe even take a, a little vacation with their family or put money away to buy that special thing that you've been always wanting. <clears throat> I'm looking for the person that doesn't have a year to work out the bugs of being new. I'm looking for a person that when they get out of training, you're still going to make minor mistakes, but they're not going to be costly. I, I had a student recently call me and ask me a question about um, something that is so simple to <clears throat> excuse me, an experienced driver that because he was new, he let things slip through the cracks and it cost him 24 hours. This is a common occurrence. One of the reasons is a lot of trainers aren't very thorough as far as getting down to the detail, uh, nuts and bolts. But even the ones that are, most people, and I hate to say it, put it like this, they don't pay attention to the little details. They try to get all the major stuff and they figure they'll figure out the little details as they go along. And that was me. <clears throat> My trainer wasn't a thorough fellow. He, uh, certain things he did well, but other things, by the time I got out to the truck, there were things I should have been taught that I had no idea. So I'm going to make this short. And then if you have questions, you can always give me a call. <clears throat> One of the qualifications, if you're going to go with me, I only take about two students a year, maybe three. So I'm very selective. And there's some times out of all the schools I go to, I don't select a single person because it's not that I'm going to select the best person that comes and applies with me. There's going to be certain things I'm, I'm looking for. And let me take, give you an example. <clears throat> to be able to train with me on my truck, you have to be in contact with me every single day, two weeks prior to you graduating. Because 90%, listen to this. 90% of everything that you're going to need to know mentally, you're going to be taught within that two weeks. Matter of fact, when you get to the truck, I'm just going to expect you to know it. That means there's going to be reading, homework, and there's going to be assignments to do. The second thing is the drill that you're going to be tested on is how well you listen to directions. I'll give you one example. I almost don't want to give this one because it's critical. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a certain things to do while you're at home and then you got to do it in the order 
and have it turned in in the timing uh, in which that I'm, ha I'm having a tough time talking today for some reason. I'm actually watching these people across the street. And it's almost comical. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to give you things to do. Once you get out uh, to orientation, you're going to, when they're talking about stuff in the class, you're already going to know this. But most, 99% of the people don't retain what they tell you in orientation except for the big stuff because there's so much stuff. So what I'm trying to do is actually uh, decompress a lot of the information you're going to need because I remember when I first started training or a couple of years ago, I'd ask a, a new student a question that they talked about in orientation and that person wouldn't even remember them having a class like hazmat. <clears throat> person would tell me, well, I don't have a hazmat class. Did you go through the hazmat class in orientation? I don't know. It's a four-hour class. How, how do you forget? My point is, is to try to get that out of the way so that when you get onto the truck and start driving with me, I'm teaching you how to drive and how to handle this stuff, and we're going over the nuances of how to make money. Number two, you can't, oops, sorry. I don't take smokers, I don't take vapors, and I don't take non-smokeless uh, non tobacco. If those are three things that you have, it's, it's not a disqualifier for this company, and we have lots of trainers that are okay with it. I just not. So, at any rate. Second thing is, if missing a paycheck is no big deal to you, like, you're not going to, like, go under after missing a paycheck or two, you're probably not going to do well with me. I'm looking for people who've got to make money. They've got, they, their, their family depends on it. Their bills depend on their, you know, everything depends on it. So, and then you'll, for those of the, that you know somebody who's ridden with me, if you talk to them, you'll find out why. It's, it's kind of a, anyway. <clears throat> The way training starts with me is we're going to go out for two weeks. We're going to run as a solo truck. I'm going to drive one week. You're going to drive one week. I'm going to watch you. Then we're going to go home for a couple of days. And then for four weeks, we're going to go out. And uh, it's going to be tough. It's not an easy thing, but we try to have fun. My last trainee uh, just graduated about a week or two ago. He averaged over, uh, uh, during solo week, he averaged about $600 a week. And during the four uh, team weeks, what we call team weeks, where we run, he drives and I drive. He had three $1,000 weeks and I believe one $1,300 week. He did very well. That is very unusual. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you're interested, please get in touch with me. My telephone number is on my business card, hanging on your wall, or it's on that poster. And I'd be glad to talk to you. Um, but these are some of the things I just wanted to get out of the way. I don't like to mention it in class because I don't want to scare the folks away that are just wanting to come through the normal channels. I am a completely different animal. I'm for the people that, like I said, that want to hit the ground running and they don't have, if they can avoid all the little rookie mistakes and make some, some money. Uh, I'll give you an example. I generally don't encourage a person to be able to train unless he's got a couple of years on his belt. I've got 23 years of training uh, under my belt here. I've got million-mile drivers that work here. So uh, they've done well. But I recently had a trainee that hadn't even completed a year. He's out training now, and he's putting some solidly good students out there. And the reason being is he, he was trained exactly the way he should do it, and he's doing, doing really well. I hope... Uh, you the best of luck ask questions let me do this while I'm thinking about it some of you may have already seen me in recruiting some of you are will be seeing me hopefully shortly to where we can you can ask questions to me directly a lot of companies but I just want to go over a couple of little things and I'm done ask questions when the recruiter stands up there and they ask a class um, any questions and no hands go up that's a really bad sign. Let me tell you something. Let me give you an example. Qu question that you might want to ask a recruiter. Are you a non-force dispatch company? 
non-force dispatch literally means they can't make you take a particular load. Most companies are force dispatch. What you need to ask the recruiter after that, what happens if I refuse a load? What happens if you give me a load uh, going into a blizzard and I just don't want to go and I refuse it? Can I be fired? Can I be sanctioned? Most companies uh, will tell you that they're 97% no-touch freight. We're 100% no-touch freight. That means you don't get back in the back of that truck for any reason and move boxes around, unload things. You know, I remember one student told me that a recruiter said, yeah, rarely do you have to get back there, but if you do, we pay you. And, of course, they're going to pay you. But what if it's 98 degrees? If you live in, uh, in Florida where I live, you know that it doesn't have to be hot. Just the humidity alone is stifling. Ask them what happens if you don't want to do it. Um, there's one big major carrier that's going to come in and talk to you. Not only do they have cameras in uh, facing out, but they have cameras facing in. They don't allow you to use cell phones, not even with a headset. That camera is watching you. Ask them what happens if you get caught. These are things that you need to know. We allow pets. Some some companies, you get, they got to be service dogs. Other companies, you have to um, uh, pay a fee, and they have breed restrictions. We don't. Um, we allow passengers. We allow children, but they got to be at least 10 years old. Obviously, they need to be your children. But anyhow, listen, if you got any questions, like I said, ask your, uh, uh, your instructors there. They should all have my number in their cell phone it is on my business card that should be hanging on the wall as well as on that recruiting poster good luck to y'all bye